different anything these days. So in recent days, the media has been absolutely flooded with the misleading news of Lashana Lynch being the new 007. Something the world press of course took way out of context and all the stereotypical man-hating feminists are now wetting their panties for. The name's Lashana, Lashana Lynch. I am so excited Over. about this. Apparently Lashana is our new 007. But fear not gentlemen, it's just a simple one-off plot element. At the end of Spectre, we saw that Bond retired from the Secret Service, driving off with Madeline Swan, leaving the life. With him no longer being part of the Secret Service, his agent code of 007 was given to a new agent. That's it. That is all. Bond is not a code name. She's just a secret agent who temporarily took over the 007 title in the next film. She is not James Bond, and neither will a woman ever be, as confirmed by producer Barbara Broccoli. I did a video on why that would be a horrible idea way back in 2016. In the fantastic prequel novel Forever and a Day by Anthony Horowitz, it is explained that Bond originally had a predecessor carrying the 007 title. After he died, Bond took over the title of 007. It's kind of an interesting idea to have the 007 title be passed on to her in this one film, which he obviously would get back during or in a subsequent film, because, you know, 007 is synonymous with Bond. It's not like Lashana Linz is going to be the next Bond in future films, because she is Agent Nomi. They may even be crazy enough to give her a spin-off film, sure. Like that weird idea they had with Jinx way back in 2002, which they thankfully dropped. But even if they do, Bond will just remain James Bond. And one thing is for certain, whoever steps into the role of James Bond in Bond 26 is going to be a man. Preferably a warm-blooded heterosexual Caucasian man, because unlike how political incorrect that may sound nowadays, that is the character that Fleming wrote, you know, the source material, a guy that is supposed to be politically incorrect. Ask any die-hard Bond fan, they want Ian Fleming's James Bond 007. And that is one of the things I think these opposers to the franchise often don't realize. Despite them disliking the franchise and not having any real passion for it, they all love to make it more progressive and change it up, like a jealous bullying sister stealing the toys of her brother. But what they often don't realize is how progressive the franchise has always been. Unlike popular belief that strong leading ladies only appeared in Bond films of the recent years, they have been present as far back as the 1960s. Take a look at Honor Blackman or Diana Rigg, or look at M who was changed to a strong woman in 1995's GoldenEye, wiping the floor with Bond's sexist ways. Moneypenny became a black woman in 2012's Skyfall, and all of these characters are very beloved by us diehard fans. But I have a slight gut feeling that bringing aboard writer and feminist Phoebe Waller-Bridge for Bond 25 may just be the biggest mistake since Mark Forster and Lee Tamahori. Reading this synopsis, it really feels like her agenda has pushed way more towards her hashtag MeToo era fetish than the actual male fantasy element of what actual Bond fans like to see. Bond is baffled to see his charms don't work on the brilliant young black woman who basically just rolls her eyes at him and has no real interest to jump in his bed. Don't get me wrong, chicks just swooning effortlessly into Bond's arms is not the way to go anymore, but part of what makes Bond so fun is that he is the ultimate fantasy. They may show some resistance every now and then, or maybe sometimes even some last minute resistance, but ultimately they willingly fall for him. Willingly as in, you know, consent. Just, just pointing that out. But that's the thing with Bond, it just works for one reason. When Bond pulls off an incredible stunt, there has to be a moment that gets you smiling, thinking, yep, only Bond. When he survives something impossible, wins in an incredible way playing cards, or one-ups the villain with a smirk, or when he gives a chick a pair of slippers when she asks him to give her something to put on, you have to have that moment of, <laughs> only Bond. That is why us fans love this guy and it's because of that fantastic fantasy element that these films have always worked for 60 years. Bond is a winner. We want to see him blow the bad guy away and win over the girl. We all secretly want to be this guy, some of us not even secretly. Now, I don't want to jump into conclusions too fast, but I get this feeling that Phoebe Waller-Bridge doesn't really get that. 
I mean, this synopsis really makes it seem like she gets a much bigger kick out of having a leading lady that just rolls her eyes at Bond the whole time and would rather want to strip Bond from his masculinity than to have him actually win her over at the end. I want strong female leads that are there with Bond, not strong female leads that come at the expense of strong male leads. I hope she at least lets him bang Anna the Armors in the film, or is this going to be the first Bond adventure in which he doesn't get any? Who wants to see that? You know, however Bond 25 is going to turn out, I want to stay optimistic about it. I am at heart overall still pretty positive. But there's no denying that all this other news of the chaos going on of the production of Bond 25 doesn't exactly make things hopeful. I just hope that both Eon and Phoebe Waller-Bridge realize that they have something special on their hands that means the world to us fans. There are still so much fantastic directions they can take it in. Sure, Lashana Lynch can carry the 007 title throughout the film, and sure, let's hope she'll be a great character, but give us fans a great Bond film. Give us that male fantasy element. Don't make it hashtag me too propaganda, because we love James Bond as it is, and we want to keep it that way. Thanks a lot for watching my video. Do you like my work and would you like to help this channel grow? Well, consider becoming part of the exclusive DBF community and help support my channel. What is the DBF community? Well, it's the community over at my Patreon page made for the biggest fans of my channel. Why did I create this community? Well, you see, every average project you see on here takes me roughly 30 to 40 hours to produce and upon uploading it, all revenue is pretty much taken away immediately by MGM or other film studios, unfairly as it goes against the fair use policies. So that's why I'm always looking for support and set up this community on Patreon for the biggest diehard fans of my work. I am a believer that those who support me should be rewarded with a ton of perks like getting 2 weeks early access to all my latest videos, receiving a personal thank you video from me, I will also send you my custom made blu-ray covers that you can print out and put in empty blu-ray boxes and you get exclusive access to the supporters discord server where you can chat with me and fellow Bond fans whenever you like. And everybody that supports me also builds towards new goals for the channel's future. All these perks come for a little $3 a month. All support is appreciated immensely. Thanks a lot guys.